Welcome to Journey to 600. Today we're talking about modalities, specifically ESTEM and ultrasound. So related to ESTEM, we will be talking about when we can use it for pain, for muscle activation, and for infection. For ultrasound, we'll be talking about when we can use it for pain or for muscle extensibility. So starting off with ESTEM for pain, there's different types of pain that we're going to be looking at. So acute pain, distracting from like really high pain, and chronic pain. Each of these different types of pain will have a different type of ESTEM and then frequency and pulse duration. So that's how we're going to break it down. So acute pain, you're going to use high rate TENS or IFC, interferential current. And high rate TENS is also known as conventional TENS. The frequency is going to be on the higher side for both of these for acute pain. So like greater than 50 with a short pulse duration, so like 50 to 150. For acute pain, the amplitude will be at a rate that the patient feels a strong sensation but is comfortable. Then distracting from high pain is going to be brief, intense tens. Again, still a high frequency but a moderate pulse duration, so like 150 to 250 is where we're aiming for the pulse duration. And then to distract from high pain, the amplitude will be at the highest tolerable intensity. And then for chronic is low rate tens, and that is also known as motor tens. So you're going to have a lower frequency, but a longer pulse duration, so basically greater than 200 for the pulse duration. For chronic pain, the amplitude will be high enough to see muscle activation. Hence the other name as motor tens. Now ESTEM for true muscle activation, it's going to be symmetrical biphasic or Russian. So symmetrical biphasic, the frequency is a little bit low on the lower side, like 30 to 80, with a pulse duration that is long, so greater than 200. The longer pulse duration allows you to get to that motor threshold quickly. Um, the duty cycle can be either 1 to 3 or 1 to 5 for both of these. I just have one listed underneath them. Duty cycle is the amount of time that the unit is on versus off. So an example of 1 to 5 would be 2 seconds on, 10 seconds off. And then an example of 1 to 3 is 2 seconds on, 6 seconds off. And basically the longer that the time is off, the longer the muscle has to recover. Russian, the beat frequency is around 50 hertz with the pulse duration being that long, about 200, and again, still that low frequency. It's just a different type of ESIM. Lastly, ESIM for wound healing due to infection is going to be through the high volt pulsed current, and it's going to have a low frequency, just like the other ones, with a long pulse duration. It is monophasic meaning that you have to know which side is positive and which side is negative. So the negative side, the anode side, is placed over the wound, and then the amplitude is turned to the sensory level. So now we're moving on to ultrasound to help decrease pain and inflammation and increase healing. So you would use non-thermal ultrasound with a duty cycle of 20 to 50 percent. The low duty cycle prevents the ultrasound from becoming hot. The frequency is based on depth, so superficial structures is going to be 1 to 2 centimeters deep, and you would use 3 megahertz. Deep is for structures that are 3 to 5 centimeters deep, and you would use 1 megahertz. The intensity is between 0.5 and 1 watts per centimeter squared. The duration of ultrasound should be from 5 to 10 minutes. Moving on. To help increase tissue extensibility and decrease stiffness, it is best done through thermal ultrasound. The main difference for thermal ultrasound is that it has a 100% duty cycle and you're going to keep the intensity closer to 
watts per centimeter squared. Since the duty cycle is 100%, it will cause a heating effect. When you turn up the intensity, you might decrease the amount of time that you administer the ultrasound to prevent overheating. Again, the frequency is based on depth, just like if you're using non-thermal ultrasound. Okay, practice question number one. A physical therapist sets the following parameters of ultrasound treatment. 0.5 watts per centimeter squared for the intensity, duty cycle 100%, 1 megahertz for the frequency for 10 minutes. What would be the objective of the following parameters? A, increase healing, B, decrease pain, C, increase tissue extensibility, D, decrease inflammation. I'll give you a moment to answer. If you're not ready to answer, please pause. So first we have to identify if these parameters are for thermal or non-thermal ultrasound. This is determined by the duty cycle. So the duty cycle is 100%, so that means it is thermal. Thermal ultrasound is to increase tissue extensibility, so C is the correct answer. A, B, and D are all for non-thermal ultrasound and would only be correct if the duty cycle was less than 100%. Practice question number two. A physical therapist wants to add electrical stimulation to the plan of care to help a patient with acute pain. Which of the following would be the best choice? A. Low rate tens. B. High rate tens. C. Brief intense tens. D. High volt pulse current. I'll give you a moment to answer. If you're not ready, please pause. So just going through the answer choices, let's say what is the purpose of each of these electrical stimulations. So low rate tens is for chronic pain. High rate tens is for acute pain. Brief intense tens is to help distract from high pain. And high volt pulse current is for wound healing due to infection. So B, high rate tens is the correct answer to help a patient with acute pain. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. See you next time on your journey to 600.